Hey everyone and welcome back to Everyday Excel. This video is the start of a new series of Excel efficiency tips and tricks I'm going to share with you and we're going to start with setting up your quick access toolbar. So I'll cover how to set it up, what I have and how I use it every day and even how you can utilise VBA on your toolbar to become really efficient and automate repetitive tasks. So if you already do have your toolbar set up, don't leave just yet, but you might want to check the video description for timestamps of other sections of the video that may benefit you. And as always, if you do find this helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel and comment down below if you have some topics you'd like me to cover. So let's get to it. So setting up your quick access toolbar. Let me know down below if you do use it and how you use it so we can share in the comments the best ideas that we all have and we'll try to collate a master quick access toolbar. But we'll start with setting it up. So within Excel at the top, if, if you haven't set this up before, your quick access toolbar will probably sit right up here at the top and you'll probably have some basic things like uh, save and maybe the email attachment and not a lot of these icons. So I like to have mine shown below the ribbon. So you can right click this drop down box here and say show below the ribbon and then they'll all show up down here. To set up your quick access toolbar with the things that you want in it. There's multiple ways of doing it. You can either go to the file tab, come down to options, and then go to quick access toolbar in this left panel. And basically it will have all the popular commands here as default, but you can also switch to all commands. And then every different command within Excel, as you can see, the list is very big. You can add into your own quick access toolbar. So let's find something to add. We might want to add center alignment. So if I hit add, this will now be on my quick access toolbar. Press the OK button and now it shows up up here at the very end of my toolbar. So I have all of these set up. Uh, they're all my very commonly used commands in Excel uh, that help me out on a daily basis. Another easy way to set things up on your quick access toolbar, if you can't find it in the commands list, is I'll bring my ribbon back and what you can do is Basically anything on any of these different tabs that you have here, you can right click and also add to quick access toolbar. So you can do it really easily like that and then you can also right click it and remove it again. So you can just go through all the different tabs and find things that you uh, use on a regular basis. Like it might be a text box for example and you could add that to quick access toolbar. I'll just remove that for now. But yeah, you get what I mean. You can just right click and add them based on what you use frequently. So I usually work without having my ribbon up here. So you can hide that ribbon so you've got more space using Control F1. So I just push Control F1 then and it hides that. You get to keep your quick access toolbar up here along the top, uh, which means that you don't have to constantly bring down the ribbon. So now we'll get into what I use my quick access toolbar for on a daily basis. So if I come to my quick access toolbar and I go to more commands to show what I have in it, Based on where you have your different commands in this list will determine what the keyboard shortcut is to use it. So I have, for example, paste values and paste formulas as my first two. Increase font size, decrease font size is three and four. Borders is five. Format painter is six. And then all the other ones I do use for quick access with the mouse, really. So if I hit OK, I'll start demonstrating some of these and how I use them. So let's say that you're setting up a model and that your client has given you a set of inputs from their Excel sheet and they're not formatted very nice. And let's say we have this input box here that we have formatted nicely. It might be a certain amount of decimal places and whatnot and you have to copy these in and paste them up into your input sheet without losing the formatting. So if you just copy and paste, obviously you'll lose the formatting which we don't want to do. So what you can do is paste values. Now I know a lot of people use the keyboard shortcut Alt-ESV and then hit enter which copy pastes values. Or some people will just copy this range, click here, if they go to home, paste special, paste values, they can paste them in like that as well. I like to have it assigned as my first thing in my quick access toolbar just because I've got used to it over time. I'm not saying it's the best one to have first, but you'll get used to what you set them up as. So what you can do is once you've set up your quick access toolbar, if you push the alt button and then up the top here you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, you can use those as keyboard shortcuts. So mine is alt one to paste values. So I can push alt one and it will paste values. Now this is just like 
um, how you might use Control B to go bold like this, or Control I to go italic. You're just using Alt One to paste these values. So the trick here is to not assign things to your Quick Access Toolbar that can be done with simple keystrokes anyway. So as I just said, um, making things bold is Control B, making things italic is Control I underlying control U and so on. There's a lot of uh, simple shortcuts that only require that one keyboard shortcut. But what you want to do is identify things that you use on a regular basis and then assign those to your quick access toolbar. Usually I only use the first five or six for keyboard shortcuts, things I use very often. And other than that, I'm just clicking up here. So, so I use things like my fill or my font color, trace precedence and dependence and remove arrows, freeze panes, attach Excel book to an email, save, etc. So that was what I first use it for, is copying and pasting values using Alt-1. The next example I want to show you is for my second command on my quick access toolbar, I use paste formulas. So let's say we came, we had a little scenario like this where we're calculating a variance. And let's say I put it in as my budget minus my actual, and that gives this. If you copy these down, we're obviously going to lose our border here. So I have borders set up as Alt-5, so I can hit Alt-5 and then I get all the different borders there. And I use bottom border and top border a lot, so I know that Alt-5-O is bottom border and Alt-5-P is top border. So I can push Alt-5-P and now I have a top border here. But my gross margin needs to be a percentage, so you can use Control shift Five in this example for me, a control shift percentage to format as a percentage, and that will do that. But let's say that you accidentally got your variance around the wrong way, so it should actually be my actual minus my budget. If you copy paste this down, the same thing's going to happen. You're going to lose your formatting and you're going to lose your percentage, and you have to do it again. But if you copy this down and I use Alt 2 for paste formulas, it will just paste the formula and you'll keep all your formatting. So you don't have to do it slowly like I just showed you. You can do it very quickly. So you don't have to wait for the number to pop up on top of your quick access toolbar before you can execute it. So that's one example. So let's say that the gray here is formatted like this because it's actuals for these years and then these are forecasts and we need to add a total. So you can hit Alt equals as an auto sum and that will sum it. And then if you hit control and you came across and pasted it here. You're actually going to paste the grey with it, but we don't want to do that. So you may just go control and how I have my quick access toolbar set up and alt 2 would be paste formulas. And now you've got that formula coming across, but we didn't take all the other formatting with us. So there's two sort of examples of how paste formulas works beneficially and you don't have to do alt ESF or alt ESV um, other shortcuts or doing click for paste special etc. So that should speed you up and save a lot of time. The next two things I have set up is increase and decrease font size is my Alt 3 and Alt 4. And the reason I have these set up here is because I also have them set up in other Microsoft Office products. So for example, if I come to PowerPoint, I have my quick access toolbar Alt 1 is to align objects because I'm always aligning things in PowerPoint. Alt 2 is my fill color. And then I have Alt 3 and Alt 4 the same in all of my office. So in PowerPoint, Word and Excel will be increase and decrease font size. So then you can get familiar across products. And then you can adjust font sizes very quickly without. So this is me pressing Alt 3. This is me pressing Alt 4. So it's very easy to increase and decrease font sizes across all my different applications that I'm using. Another good one is Format Painter. So I'm sure that you guys are always format painting stuff like me. Let's say that we want to format paint these as my inputs. Usually people will click and then they'll click the format painter and then they click there, which means that you have to click here. You have to come up here and be somewhat accurate and then come back to here. What I have set up is if you click the one that you want to take the format from and then I can hit Alt 6 as set up for me, then it does that and I can just format paint this. And if I wanted to change it to this one, for example, I hit Alt 6 and then just paste my format like that. So it's a very quick way to 
do full matte painting without having to move your mouse across the screen quite a bit. So it'll just say, it's all these little seconds that save you quite a lot of time and just make jobs a lot easier. Other things I have set up on my quick access toolbar are show decimal places and remove decimal places. So it's just easy for me to come click up here or I can use Alt 7 and Alt 8 to be coming back and forth. That's me pushing those now. Other things I have set up are things like um, expand field and collapse field for hidden rows, uh, for grouped rows, sorry, and then trace precedence, trace dependence, and remove arrows. As I said before, my font color and our fill color. Also your font size here if you wish. I ha have grouping here. I have uh, email, so if I click this, it will attach this workbook directly to an Outlook email, so you don't have to go file share anymore. And then freeze panes is obviously quite common as well and save and we'll cover these two here in a second. So something I'm always doing as an investment banking analyst is creating things like graphs and copying them into a PowerPoint deck for example. So let's say for example here we had some um, data about geographies and maybe this is their sales split. I might need to create a pie chart so you can create a pie chart by hitting Alt, N, Q and then Enter and that will create a pie chart or of course you can just insert and create a pie chart how you normally would. But what I'm always doing is I'm always coming in, I always have to delete my chart title because I usually have will have some sort of title bar, that's my own format. I'll also remove the fill and I'll also remove the outline. Now that's a good half a dozen clicks and if you're doing lots of graphs and you're trying to do it quickly, that's obviously a very re repetitive task that's annoying. So what you can utilize is your personal macro workbook and you can create little VBA scripts and then stick them on your toolbar here. So what I have set up here, this one's called uh, perf personal XLSB because it's in my personal macro workbook across Excel, which basically means no matter, no matter what Excel workbook you're in, you'll be able to use this macro. This one here is called graph format. So I'll show you how it works. I can go Alt and Q and insert a new pie chart and then all I do is click this button and it removes my fill color, my border and my chart title and then maybe I'll just click the white font here and I can use my Alt 3 to increase the font size, Control B for bold and now within about 10 seconds I've got this formatted how I would copying it into a PowerPoint so that's one that saves a lot of time so I'll show you how to set these up now. You can go to developer and you could record a macro and when you do record it, you want to go store macro and personal macro workbook and then you'd record your macro and then what you can do is if you come up to your quick access toolbar, you go to more commands, come to the drop down list and there's macros here, scroll down to the bottom and you'll have your personal mac macros that you record. I've only got a couple, I'm sure you guys can think of some ideas that maybe you could automate as well. And what you'd do is you'd add it into here, like I've added this, let's remove it and let's add it again. So I'll add it and it gives it a little icon here and if you hit modify you can then change it. So I just chose this square with a cross through it so I know maybe it means like remove formatting and then I just know that it's like that. Hit OK. Now I've got that macro up here and it works at a click of a button no matter what workbook I'm in. If I again insert a pie chart, come up here, click that button and look, it's just saved about 10 clicks from doing all the formatting. So that's one thing I use it for. Another thing that I use it for is when we're sending out materials to different potential buyers, we record uh, what action we've done with who. So you may have your buyers down one side and different actions that you've taken uh, a long time and you might want to record when you sent the teaser out or when you sent an NDA or whatnot uh, so you can refer to it easily and you can also see who's got what and what stage they're at. So I was just typing in the date for example, now that gets a bit repetitive and maybe I also wanted to know what time I did it so maybe it was at 12 o'clock that I did it and then you might have to muck around and change everything here so you could go um, hours, hours, minutes, minutes. So it's formatted like that 
and maybe I've got all of this like that. Just so if I ever have to refer to my emails as to when I done something, I have a rough estimation of when I did it. But instead of having to type that in every time, I just created another macro here and I've assigned it to this little clock here. And when I click it, it will automatically just paste the exact current time. So I can just come in here very quickly, push that button, it records the d date and time as of right now, and then I can move on very quickly. So I'll go into the VBA editor now and show you these two the scripts th that you can use. You could just simply copy these and put them into your own personal macro workbook, or you can record macros and then copy paste them into your personal workbook as well. Um, so you can start utilizing these. So if you go to developer, Visual Basic, you have your projects up here and we want to be in the VBA project personal workbook. If I come to this module one, here are my two macros here that I have. So one's called live time. That was the one I just showed you where it copy pastes the time, the current time and the current cell that you're in. So it says active sales value equals now and then active cell number format and I want it to be in this format. And that's all it does, so very simple. You guys can simply type this in your own one if you want to. So I'll just obviously read that and type it through. The other one I've got, this took me a while to figure out. It took me about 30 minutes of tinkering around with it. But once you've got it, it saves a lot of time and it makes these charts a lot easier for any chart, by the way. So, and this here is my graph format VBA code. So you can just simply, if this is, if these are the things that you wanted to have, so no title, no field, no area, then simply just copy this workbook. Otherwise you can record one, work out how uh, the syntax works for different areas and then also add that into yours. But what this is doing is saying dim, which is, stands for dimension. So we're creating a variable and we'll create a variable called object chart or whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be as a chart. And then we're going to say set that object chart to equal what the active chart is. So you have to have selected your chart. And then with that chart, its settings, we want to say line style none, which means it'll have no outline has title equals false, and then the chart fill area equals false as well. And then it will just do that, and then you'll have all your graph formatted. So if I show you on another chart, for example, maybe we go to insert some sort of column chart. I click my button, and it removes my heading. And then very quickly, we can have our graph sort of set up somewhat how you like it. So that was all for the first episode on the efficiency in Excel series that I'm going to be starting. Hopefully you learned a few things here. I'd highly recommend setting up your quick access toolbar because it really helps in day to day. Even if you're only saving 5 or 10 seconds at a time, it definitely adds up and saves you time over the long run and makes tasks very simple. So like always, if you found this helpful, like and subscribe, share it with some other people that might find it helpful, comment down below what you think was helpful or what you think might be a good thing to have in your quick access toolbar and how it's going to save you time every day. You can also check out my other videos on my channel uh, where you can start learning about dashboards and I'm going to also start publishing uh, chart videos on how to create unique charts that you can also add to your dashboards. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Until next time, see ya.